We begin the integrated audio video control professional course with where else but HDMI, HD base T. Digital video can be extended over 100 meters, in fact, depending on what kind of cabling you have. Anytime you have a single wire that you need to extend, HDMI control, IRRS232, or even voltage control, and networking information, you're going to use either an HDMI cable or an HD base T extender. From time to time, you're going to design systems to either be point to point, meaning source to display, or perhaps using HDMI cabling, long HDMI cabling and HD base T extenders into a video distribution system, video switching system, or out of the video distribution and switching system. When designing systems where you know that you'll need to use an HD base T extender or a long range HDMI, consider that many key digital devices have a built in HD base T transmitter or receiver in the main hardware unit. We're going to begin with the HDMI cables. Just know that Key Digital supports up to all UHD 4K video resolutions. So everything that's out there at this current time, all of the video formats and resolutions are going to uh, approach 18 gigabits per second maximum. And Key Digital's full line of HDMI cables supports up to 18 gigabits per second bandwidth. We begin with the short length cables. KD Pro 3, KD Pro 6, and KD Pro 9. Those are 3 feet, 6 feet, and 9 feet in length. They are VW1 rated for out of wall installation, such as use inside of an equipment rack. We move from there to the models KD Pro 12, KD Pro 16, and KD Pro 20. These HDMI cables are 12, 16, and 20 foot in length, again supporting all uh, resolutions up to UHD 4K, 18 gigabits per second. You have nothing to worry about. It's the same exact feature set as the short length HDMI cables, except for now we go into a CL3 rating or FT4 for Canada, meaning that they, can, they are certified to go in wall. And we have our KD Pro 30G, KD Pro 40G, KD Pro 50G, and KD Pro 75G. These are the long length HDMI cables. Again, supporting full 18 gigabits per second bandwidth. There is no sacrifice there, even by going to a long length run. And that's what makes these products unique. They again have the CL3 FT4 rating for in-wall installation. And it is the booster tech technology that is the prime integration tool here for delivering 18 gigabits per second signal all the way up to 75 feet long. Now, how do we do that? The display at, uh, end of the HDMI cable has special equalization. There is no need for an external power supply, but you must ensure that when integrating these uh, long length cables, KD Pro 30, 40, 50, and 75G, you must pay close attention to those bright yellow tags. The display has to go at the end of that run in order to ensure you are utilizing or are taking full advantage rather of the Booster Tech technology. Now, if you install those cables backward, it may still work for you, but the Booster Tech will be applied at the front end of the cable where that's typically not going to be where you need to benefit from that Booster Technology. Now we move into HD base T extenders. Anytime you have a network cable from your equipment rack to your display locations or from a source plug-in location to the equipment rack or even a network cable between source and display direct point to point as we mentioned, you'll be using an HD base T extender. A single cat five gets you video, audio and control. Here is a prime, uh, uh, the core product for Key Digital, the KDX222 and the KDX222PO. These are uh, currently some of the most 
widely used products from Key Digital as they meet a great price point and yet give all of the full uh, software suite to ensure you have reliable extension over single Cat5 wire, Cat5e, Cat6. Supports UHD 4K resolutions up to 10.2 gigabits per second bandwidth and has a support for HDCP 2.2. You're able to send those UHD 4K signals less than or equal to 125 feet, whereas 1080p signals can be extended over single cat 5 wire less than or equal to 230 feet. They're a very low profile chassis, meaning you have a, uh, a very slim profile. We understand that there's not a lot of space behind those displays any longer, and that's when we went into this low profile chassis across our product family. Now, what is the difference between the X222 and the X222PO? Is that the PO version has power over HD base T, so we see only one power connector on the transmitter. So it extends that signal, uh, the, the power to power the receiver, which is typically installed behind the display. That power is extended over that single cat 5 wire. Now, speaking of the IR and RS-232 control, this makes your integration uh, much easier. We have IR control. We have uh, one option to control the video source. So for example, if you have a point-to-point -point application with a display and a cable box that is installed out of sight, out of mind, you would be, you would be doing this where you'd be collecting line of sight IR at the receive unit with our included IR sensor, you have three wires. You have the red wire, which is the powering because that IR sensor requires uh, power in order to always be listening, if you will, for the IR signals. You have the white wire, which is the IR signal once it is collected, and you have the ground on black. And then out of the transmit unit, Located at the cable box in this example, you have just a two-wire IR emitter also included in the box. We plug in the uh, dashed uh, uh, wire, which is the uh, IR signal, into the IR out transmit, that pin number four there, and the solid black wire to pin number five for the ground. And uh, for IR applications, pin six is not, uh, not required. So this is very useful. Make sure you keep that in mind. It's one of the most common applications for that product. The KDX422POA is a step-up product from the KDX222. It is transmit and receive. Front and back we're looking at here of the transmitter and front and back of the receiver. Again, supporting HDCP 2.2 and HDR10 on information on the EDID files. That is a step-up feature from the X222. And the other step-up feature separating this from the X222 is the audio de-embed. On the transmitter, your HDMI incoming video and audio, we take the audio and we, we uh, duplicate it to be out on the analog balanced unbalanced connector and the digital PCM coaxial connector. The distances for this product are 4K up to 125 feet and 1080p up to 230 feet. And for the 4K Ultra HD resolution, we support all resolutions that uh, are at a 10.2 gigabits per second bandwidth on this product. So your 4K could be at 30 frames 444 at 8-bit color depth, or you could do four, uh, 60 frames per second 420. You have IR and RS-232 extension here that are separate of each other, so you could extend both video, audio, IR, and RS-232 all over a single cat wire. Now, regarding this audio de-embed, this is a very nice integration tool so that, for example, you could plug in an Apple TV, which has no external audio any longer, and you could get an audio breakout for integration into your audio distribution system or audio receiver. <clears throat> now just know that there are no DSP features 
and there's no up-down conversion. So if you'd like to have your audio broken out on the analog balanced on balance connector, then your HDMI video audio source must come in with a two-channel PCM audio format. How do you tell your source to uh, ensure it's outputting always two-channel PCM on the HDMI connector? Through Key Digital's EDID control, which we'll get into shortly. Here we have KD-SX440WP. This is a wall plate presentation switcher, scaler, and extender kit. So this is a really amazing part that will collect the line of sight IR as well to control connected devices. And, <clears throat> and it installs in a dual king wall plate that can be mounted either in a wall in a conference room or classroom, or perhaps in a table box or floor, bo or floor box. You have a switching selection on, a, on the button there, or it can be activated to auto mode. It supports HDR10, and you see the receive unit has the power supply, so it powers the transmit unit over that single cat wire. You could do 4K at up to 100 meters with this product, 1080p up to 400 and feet, that is 121 meters, and it supports 4K UHD resolutions up to 10.2 gigabits per second. So let's take a closer look at the switching selection using the integration tool for auto switching. You just press and hold the input select button for three seconds, and that button will highlight blue, or excuse me, highlight gold. When you plug in a connection, it will automatically switch to the connected source from HDMI to VGA, VGA to HDMI, or if you unplug your connected source and there is an active source on the other input, it'll also advance. Another great integration tool is the IR sensor that is built in to this wall plate. So you can have your remotes for your connected equipment even multiple device remotes. In this example, the transmitter sends over the HD base T IR, collects IR, and, and it is output on the receive unit. And if you have multiple devices to control, you could use an IR connecting block, such as the IR kit 300 that's pictured here, or any third party IR connecting block as well to control multiple devices for a simplistic system. Another great integration tool for this device is analog video scaling. The VGA input is accepted at the uh, transmit wall plate here, and you can adjust the aspect ratio or the resolution. You could even uh, move the image left or right on the screen, up or down on the screen, or increase and decrease width and height. When you increase and decrease width, it is from the right side of the screen. You increase or decrease height, it is from the bottom of the screen. And this just ensures you have a really nice screen fit, whereas the HDMI is just a simple pass-through of the incoming signal. The video scaling features do not apply to the digital video input. Here we have KDX422WP, another wall plate perfect for conferencing applications. Again, supporting HDCP 2.2 and on a dual gang wall plate, making it ideal for in installation in conference and classrooms, any kind of presentation application, or oftentimes we also get folks uh, installing a wall plate at any location where a gaming system and console might be plugged in on a residential application. This unit supports flexible POH, so you could plug in a power, the power supply at the transmit or the receiver. And in fact, the power supply currently uh, ships with a 25 foot lead. So you could go up the wall and uh, across the ceiling if you need to a bit to plug in at a power uh, outlet if it is not immediately available there. 4K 60, uh, 10.2 re uh, gigabits per second resolutions are uh, extended up to 125 feet and 1080p up to 230 feet. 
And in addition to IR, it also extends, uh, in addition to the audio video signal, it also extends IR and RS-232 signals so that you can control the display, the projector, or source equipment. Now I'd like to introduce you to HDMI correction extenders. These are devices that go inline on your HDMI in order to manage handshaking or to improve performance if you have a uh, hit or miss HDMI uh, extension. This is a nice piece to uh, booster and buffer that HDMI signal and improve connectivity issues. The KD Fix 418 has a great feature with 18G to 10G bandwidth conversion. It can compress and decompress 18G signals so that uh, those signals may be extended over 10.2 gigabit per second infrastructure. It has an input boost feature to help clear up slight uh, signal degradation like uh, pixel loss uh, and maybe some image flickering. Full HDCP 2.2 support. This is a very compact device and it can be powered over standard USB offering full buffer system of the handshaking, the HDCP authentication, the hot plug detection authentication tools that we'll introduce you to here shortly. Here's one of the uses for the KD Fix 418, two of the uses in fact. One of them is 18 gigabit per second signal repair. So imagine you have a 4K source, you have a 4K television. They all support 18 gigabits per second, but if you have a long HDMI cable, you might commonly encounter pixel loss. Installing the Fix 418 can help repair that uh, pixel loss, whether it be uh, installed at the beginning of the run or at the end of the run. So short cable in or long cable in and short cable out. That's sometimes going to vary based on your problems. You might need to talk to Key Digital's technical support to find out uh, the ideal place for that or just by trial and error. At the bottom design, we have an HDMI extender, so you could use actually two long HDMI cables. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be supported for 10.2 gigabits per second signals only, where you could have, for example, two of our 75 foot HDMI cables to create a total extension of uh, 150 feet in length over your HDMI cables. Now if you are using, uh, if you are extending 18G, signals, you can actually use that for, with only one long slash active slash directional cable, if you will, uh, where one could be long and one could be short for 18G signal extensions. Here's a very cool mode. This is the input boost mode, where the input of the HDMI, uh, HDMI input on the KD Fix 418 can have a high equalization setting to help clear up lost pixels, for example, or slight flickering. Now it can uh, repair a slight damaged uh, extensions or degraded extension, but it's not gonna be the be all end all fix all for uh, really severe degraded uh, signals. So keep that in mind. And we activate input boost mode using the control rotary that we've highlighted on the unit here. Any of the settings 2, 3, 6, 7, A, B, E, or F out of that 16 position control rotary is going to activate that input boost mode. Here we have uh, another mode, 18G to 10G down convert mode. So this is a very, very cool feature where an 18 gigabit per second signal, so you know, something that's uh, 4K, 60 frames per second, 444 color subsampling, 10, uh, 12 bit deep color, um, is going to be a full 18 gigabits per second signal, right? Well, uh, here you can go into the Fix 418, activate the down convert mode, and that signal will come out at 10.2 gigabits per second. Why would you need that? Why would you want that? Well, perhaps you need to, you have an existing HDMI switching, HDMI matrix system uh, that you need to go into. Uh, for example, most HD base T extenders are, support a maximum of 10.2 gigabits per second as of the current uh, recording of this video. In order to uh, activate 
the down convert mode, you can set the control rotary to position four, five, six, or seven. Another very useful mode as we uh, overcome the new obstacles of digital video multi-zone uh, switching and professional distribution systems is this compression mode. Now compression mode <clears throat> must be used with two units. One would be a, a compressor and one would be a decompressor, an encoder and a decoder if you will, where you can have an 18 gigabit per second signal coming in, have it go from the encoder to the decoder, the compressor to the decompressor at uh, at 10.2 gigabits per second for ex extension over a long HDMI cable, for example, and then be decompressed back to 18 gigabits per second so you have a full 18G signal for receiving, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for displaying at your connected monitor or projector. Now, in order to do this as the encoder, you set the control rotary to setting 8, 9, A, or B, and at the decoder to setting 4, 5, 6, or 7. Another corrector extender uh, is uh, the HD Fix 22. This has been a problem solver for many integrators who have been confronted by new challenges when integrating with HDCP 2.2. The uh, this product has HDCP 2.2 authentication to the connected source, along with EDID control that we'll detail shortly that allows you to choose a 4K 30 frame per second handshake in addition to 4K 60 frame per second handshake, 1080p handshakes, 1080i handshakes, and more. You could actually go a full 60 feet in, 60 feet out with this product. And this product along with many others features the troubleshooting tools of our full buffer system. All of the products discussed so far all of the active products, not the HDMI cables, but our fixers, our HDMI HD base T extenders, have the full buffer system. That is a TMDS reclocking, so a degraded signal comes out repaired. HDCP authentication to the source, EDID handshake management to the source, telling it, yeah, allowing the integrator to choose with the dial or through other software selection, what is the handshake that will be going to the, video, the connected video source so that we can ensure it's a handshake that's compatible with all of the displays in the system and also activating hot plug detection voltage. So let's take a closer look at the troubleshooting tools of these devices beginning with the all important EDID handshaking control. EDID is the, is, um, stands for Extended Display Identification Data but again it's commonly referred to as the handshake. Now there are a lot of misconceptions in the industry about what is EDID handshaking. It does not go to the connected video display. It is a handshake that goes from the display to the source. So we take a look here at the example of a monitor, of a projector rather, providing a handshake to a source. So imagine in a simple one-to-one -one connection, this projector will give a handshake to the, uh, to the laptop telling it, here is my supported video and audio formatting in addition to a lot more complex data, of course, but sim sim simplistically looking at it, here's my uh, supported uh, maximum video resolution, and, and, and it's a, it's a top-down listing, in fact. Uh, maximum supported resolutions as, low, as well as lower resolutions so that the source and display can see eye-to-eye to, eye to have a match, a handshake, and then the source should comply with that received handshake and output a video format that will be uh, compatible with the display so that it can be shown on that display, on that projector. Another uh, troubleshooting tool built into key digital devices is forced hot plug detection. Very, very important tool here. And certainly a tool that has helped increase key digital's uh, reputation as being the most reliable brand in the industry. Forced hot plug detection, uh, well, again, it's best to just simply think of things as a one-to-one -one connectivity. The, <clears throat> the uh, source, the, uh, connect, the digital video source, does not output all the time uh, if the display, the projector, is not on. 
it is more intelligent than analog world where the where connected analog video sources would just output signal at all times in the digital world again these sources are more intelligent so by activating forced hot plug detection to on settings 2 3 6 7 a b e and f as we see in this table our device forces hot plug detection signals to the source so that the source will constantly output a signal making our rely our our uh, our extension that much more robust and reliable that it's always going to have a signal there so that you can have a successful sync with your display. Now these sort of troubleshooting tools can be viewed uh, and manipulated over the control rotary but can be viewed also through our professional diagnostics tool that is the RS-232 port with many devices. So the, X, the KDX222, the KDX422POA, the KDSX440WP, uh, the KDX422WP, the KDFIX22, all of these devices, these seemingly simple HD base T extenders and seemingly simple HD base T repair boosters actually have. RS-232 diagnostics that you can send the command STA to our unit and you could receive very valuable information in response from as a response from our unit. Now we're not going to go into this in depth here. This is going to be something you will learn in the integrated audio video control level 2 courses. Thank you very much for attending this course.